Welcome back to Tools and Track. In the last low cost episode, we got the engine to crank. So, by rights, this episode we should have it starting, right? So, the next thing I'm going to look at is the ABS. Now, I think we can all agree that the ABS is not going back in this car. So, I'm going to delete as much of this out as I can. Fuse box right through to every rant wire and just start kind of breaking up the woods for the trees here because if we don't need it, it's just getting in the way. Okay, that's the ABS that was sitting here completely deleted from the loom. You'll see we've still got our diagnostic which lives away up here for reasons and best known to Mazda and spinning off from there we've still got our fuel pump so that I'm gonna to have to shorten I'd imagine this we're just gonna leave for the moment because it's, I think we might need this I don't know moving back to the front you'll see that I've now taken a lot of the sheath off so it's looking a lot more messy I guess but a lot less congested I've started to tidy up things like this that's our starter and kicker wire assembly there's also i think an oil pressure switch that lives down there we've also removed the entire live that went to the back of the car to here because that's where the battery is going to live so we're going to sort an earth post and recrimp that fuse box immobilizer circuit that i've put down here to deal with we'll come to that in due course i've left wired into that the ignition loom and from the ignition loom we've got a small number of wires going to the ECU. Now I think we're kind of getting close to a point where this is all the wiring we need. Um, so we're going to thin that out. Maybe not thin it out, but I think we're we're going to have to untangle a lot of this and just whatever needs to remain gets lengthed accordingly so that it just takes a smarter route. And I say a smarter route because, well, we don't need all of these corners. We just need lengths going to whatever they need to go to. When we were having a mad panic and did everything wrong, my... Uh, lengthening of loom to get to here as you can see has been an utter waste of time because since we have unpicked the loom i now have mountains of slack to actually do this properly i think it will probably follow a line up here like that we'll get a couple of brackets just to tuck that out the way and then that will meet at the back here getting there slowly but surely i think also what we're definitely not going to do is look to shorten this uh, <laughs> because look at it, we would be here for, for weeks. So whatever amount of wiring modifications we do, that lens probably gonna remain and we'll just use the excess loom to tuck it out the way neat. I'm gonna have a look at this. Uh, and in order to have a look at that correctly and not get into the panic we had earlier on, I've printed out the wiring diagrams. So let's look at the fuel system now. Right, I've just unsheathed all the alternator with me a bit, which really just consists of three wires. Now I'm going to rejoin these and then sheath it all back up again. You might wonder, what's the point in that? <laughs> well, at the moment, the lengths are just completely wrong, which means I'm going to have a coil of wire at some point at the end of this. Also, it kind of laces in and around stuff, and I'm going to run a single line from the fuse box specifically for the alternator. Once that's run and we know where the rest of the loom goes, we can start combining it with other things but for the moment, I just want alternator to be alternator. With this part, we can now untangle it, trace it back down along the white wire and the route it should take. Once I've done that, considering I've already chopped this, I'm going to re-length it so that it matches and then we'll tape it back up again. And that's just going to make things so much more neater. There's a prime example. Why, why is this wire longer than the other one? I don't know, but we're going to Find up from here and then length it properly at the termination end. Ok, 
Okay, avid viewers, I'm about to do something that might be quite rash. Now, I've been looking into this, so we're now at the uh, big spaghetti junction. I'm trying to thin it out because there's far too much here and there's a good chunk of it I'm pretty sure I don't need. Now, one such thing is a very obvious fuse here for audio. Now, audio has a red with green stripe wire coming to it, and that pretty much comes straight from, like, the main fuse box. So that's a power supply. Out of audio comes an orange wire. And that orange wire goes here, into this guy. And all that this guy does, as far as I can determine, is send a whole load of earths to the chassis and a whole load of spliced powers to this. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> that's the immobiliser. Do you want to really start messing around with stuff and you don't know its full purpose? The problem I've got is, I can't find any wiring to delete this immobiliser circuit. But, by the same token, I'm pretty sure we can wire it out. I'm fairly sure we can engineer it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to document what I'm doing here rather thoroughly. So if we get to a situation where I don't get a kick out of this, and when it comes time to first start, I'll know why. And I'm going to leave the tails in in case I need to reinstate this. But for the moment, we're taking out this. And I think it's a door and lock timer. I think it's got very little to do with anything else. So let's just, uh, let's just scrub it. And here's what we're going to do. Starting at the main fuse box here, we're going to find the red and the green, and we're going to snip it. Then at the interior fuse box, we're going to snip the same wire and remove it completely. Then we're going to take the corresponding fused wire for the orange, and we're going to snip that. Then we're going to pull it through and keep it as part of this module, just in case we need to reinstate it. The module has two blue tails, which go into the immobilizer. The first really obvious one, we're going to take from here, and leave us at. The second one, we're going to take at the bind, so we know which is which, and clean split it. Like that. That way, if we need to put it back together, we know which one of those will be which. That just leaves us with three wires to identify. The black one goes to a common earth, as can be seen here. Easy snip. The black with a yellow stripe, for whatever reason known to Mazda alone, goes to this batch of common earths over here. So it's another earth and we're going to snip that out accordingly. The black with a white stripe goes to this shared bundle of earths. So out it comes. Now that might seem a really gung-ho way of doing stuff, but because each wire has an individual colour code, if I've really buggered this up, I can put it back in easy enough. Now we can get this module out of the way, that just leaves us with the immobiliser module. Right, ignore all that. I was talking complete nuts and answers. I've been looking at this fuse box upside down. It's nothing to do with audio. What I've just deleted there is D lock or door locks. So that's fine, we don't have doors. Carry on. Right, I've been trimming out earths here, uh, things like this. The reason being, there seems to be an entire myriad of black wires within this loom, and they all tie into these same earth points throughout where the chassis has been on the old MX-5. Which seems a bit weird to me, it's almost as if Mazda didn't trust the chassis itself to be a, a suitable earth point, because, well, none of this needs to touch the chassis, because they all wire into each other, you know what I mean? It's almost like Mazda knew this thing's going to rust into a million pieces, so, <laughs> don't trust it to ever have an earth. But, in my uh, haste to do so, I've snipped this earth, and out from the back where the fuel pump would live, has fallen all of this. Now, I'll be honest, there are two plugs here, and I've got another one that does look like it could be for the fuel pump. However, I'm not sure. So what I've got is fuel pump wiring diagram. So I'm gonna have a wee look at that and just check what the wiring codes for the colour should be and make sure that I haven't just, for some reason, taken out the entire fuel pump circuit. What I should have for the fuel pump is uh, two blacks, obviously. No, wait, a black and a bracket red. Okay, so black primary with a red. Well, the good news is, none of these wires look like that. I've got a red with a blue. None of these should say red and blue. None of the two of these wiring codes seem to make sense, so we're gonna to go to plan B when I'm trying to work out what the fuel pump should have, and that's to dig out the old fuel pump. Fuel pump assembly. Haha, <laughs> good news. Not the one that I need. No, bad news. Maybe it is the one I need. Well, this might be a problem. Where the hell are these gone? What you'll see here is that I have started to plumb in the fuel line. 
and I say plumbing, you know, temporarily root without it uh, snarling in the way of anything. And the reason I've started to temporarily run all the fuel line is because, as we discussed earlier on, I do not have the correct wiring for the fuel pump. Now, I've tried to cast my mind back in this because pff, quite why I decided to chop out the entire fuel pump really and delete it is beyond me. But what I think has happened here is it's been so convoluted and the fact that the old fuel pump was an in-tank pump, I've just went, ah, we'll, we'll do this from scratch when we get down the line. And yes, one year ago, I literally said that's tomorrow's problem. <clears throat> well, that's now today's problem. So we've had a wee look and we're gonna have fun. So as I can hear as Damak figure out, your main relay, which is basically power from the battery switched, comes in here. Now you've got two white and blue, that's what L eventually I've worked out stands for, blue, obviously. Um, two of these pair off, that powers both sides of the relay. And then obviously the relay is triggered on by the PCM, which is, that's right, ECU. So that obviously tells it when to turn on and off, and there's also a signal that goes to the data line. So that's pretty basic, we can replicate this. We can actually replicate the whole lot just like that if I was being proper minch bag, but I have a feeling I'm going to want to have the ECU having a say in this because it's a deadhead system. I don't know if this needs to turn on and off depending on what fuel pressure it's getting. So what I think we'll do in the first instance is just have it live. Uh, <clears throat> if it's going to give us problems, we can come back to that. But I want to see if I can just get it to work by having bang, ignition comes on, fuel pump comes on, car starts. If it doesn't, and the ECU is going to be wanting to tell it what to do, then we can we can let that happen. But for the sake of simplicity, it's not going to happen now. Let's just run a big live right down the length of the car and wire up the fuel pump. I'm going to pass the camera over to Captain Happy in the corner. Look at his happy wee face. Give us a smile. Now, to clarify, the immobiliser will have to stay. I've had a bit of research and the ECU categorically will not acknowledge a start without that box, so... That is probably the whole point, to be fair, if you could just cut it out. Aye, I mean, I'm not, I'm not raging about it, but I'm not happy about it either. So what we're going to have to work out is where everything's going to actually live at this point. For yourself though, after last time when we had no oil in the engine so we couldn't crack it, I have decided to buy oil. Now, for those at home wondering what oil do you need for an MX-5 engine, it's not this. Because this is literally the cheapest oil I have ever found in my life. How much? This was £9. Pounds. Oh. For what? A gallon or five litres? Wow. If you can sort that for me, big boy, we we'll get some oil in. Some yes. Yes. I'm an oil man. I'm an oil man! He's always going to f***ing run around and save the day. What's that? Superman. I have dams on the spare. Superman syndrome. Yay, an oil cap, just in case the first wasn't enough. Whilst Mechanic Lodor is uh, doing his oil thing, I finally get to close this out. This is my freshly welded prop shaft. Now you'll see here it's got... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, did you not know that? That looks the tits. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Um, so, that has been properly put together. They've got a nice cut black, so it's going to be the nicest thing in the car. So I'm going to throw this on so we can just forget about it and finally move on from the prop shaft saga. So the prop shaft has to go in from below, but because we have a pretty much bare car, it's an easy task. Prop shaft in. Hoggy, are you okay? Me. That's, that's <laughs> he's still at it. He's just trying to get the oil back. It's got all the on it that didn't come out. How much of this do you want in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ollie, big man. I paid all the big man for that every trap. Yeah. Every last trap here. Yeah. Oh, oh he's so oh, look, he's, he's. Look at it. It consistently <laughs> drops, and then for no reason, it'll just tilt back the way. Do you want to know what would make that really easy? A funnel? No, no, no. Take that drill out of there and drill a hole in the top oh, because of the air in. And it will help you. Aye. Just do it, just do it. Let's ding, ding. How did that do? That's some science team. Let's have a look. And now it's fine because it's not having to get air in through the front. Science. Science. <laughs>
You'll notice here as well that I've put the airbox in. Two. <laughs> Hey, come on, so yeah, I've, uh, I've put the airbox in here as well, as you'll know. Uh, if nothing else, really to give these two wires a, a location. Um, and what we've also worked out here is now that I put this back on, we know we're definitely not using it because it might, might be, it won't even fit in the car. So we're now at the back of the car where Mr. Mechanical Hodor is going to help one half of this process yes. by wiring in the actual fuel pump side of what cool. we need. Now this is all going to be pump. custom loom stuff, so... The fuel pump. No, that's the old one. Oh, you've got a new fuel pump? Oh, mate, have you not got on to the stealth? Have a look underneath the fuel tank. Oh, you did talk about this actually weeks ago. It's just such a vast joining chasm of time between things happening, I forget. Yeah. Ah, that's bad. I do understand what the wiring all does and where it runs, but see these diagrams, it's like, I can play a piano, but I can't read really sheet music. It's right. the same situation with this. Right. You look at this, main relay, section B1A, 13, WLF, WLF, WLF. No, 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 no. the f What the f does that mean? This is the feed. This powers up at the bottom, right. right? So that comes from the main relay. Right, and so that's, that's the top one. One side of the feed is going to a switch, and the other side is going to a relay. Yeah. Ah, oh, see, so it's a way to split them out with different little pages. <laughs> L hyphen blue. Aye, that was neat, man. <laughs> right. I actually worked that out. See, this is for all I'm a moron. I ask the same questions Tommy does. He just gets to the end of the story in five minutes, whereas it takes me five hours. Right. But what does take a PWG mean? Take a plug. Oh, right. <laughs> it means my handwriting <laughs> shit. <laughs> so this is our positive feed for everything, and that's our relay, right? So our relay will power this up once it's energised, but we've got two choices of things we can energise this. And they're going to energise it from the looks of this by earthing, okay? So we're not going to send a positive up here, we're going to take a positive through this, and whatever these two things are, when they earth, it'll complete the circuit and turn the pump on. Now, what are these two things? Well, the PCM, that's the power control module that we discussed the other one, the ECU. But we've also got another thing that will turn on this fuel pump. The diagnostic port. What the diagnostic port will let you do is, if you've got a problem with the car, you can pin out in a certain way and earth this entire circuit through that diagnostic port and turn the pump on to see if it works. So that's for the question mark at this end. That's a key. So that one? <laughs> <laughs> How this old school pre-OBD diagnostic port works is, you'll read the manual, and the manual will tell you which one of these you bridge out to test Wow, that's how the diagnostics work in the old cars. You will also have some way to diagnose, to pin these out that will be read ECU, and that will cause a bulb to flash, and it will flash a number of times to tell you what the fault of the ECU is. It's a BBC micro. It's actually less fucking, like effective than that. But yes, there is a pin that we will be able to go from here, to, from one to another, and what that will do is literally air fill this fuel pump on. Cool. Right, so what am I doing? Connecting wires? Yes, yeah, so I need you to wire me up a new fuel pump. We're just feeding through enough of this electrical wiring that Tommy will have enough he needs at the front to connect it to whatever it's going to connect to. All I'm going to do is terminate it and connect it to the fuel pump. So this black wire here is going to be the fuel pump wire. And I will hasten to add probably the only wire to the back of the car, but then we're done. Fingers crossed. Hi, hi, hi. Does it matter what side the positive and negative goes on in this, no? Yes. Right, well, it's not labelled. Yes. Right, so how do you know what side to put it on? Yes. Thanks for the clear guidance. Yes. What I'm doing here is just... Being obnoxious. Yes. Tidy up what I know I can tidy up, so I'm, leave, I'm going to be left with whatever this is. I'm going to start kind of trimming them out. Ah! F*** you. Success? No. Here there's going to be a battery, you'll know, I put, I put the fuse box in a proposed place. I think it might go under here. Uh, I like the position of it, but I don't like the fact that I'm going to have to transit block so many wires through it. So that goes into the back like that. So we could probably root these all a lot easier, but I'll come back to it, right? Anyway, we're still sitting with a whole load of Fs that we're going to have to deal with. But for the moment, what I'm going to do is deal with this. This, this is really messing with my juju. And there's only one real way I can do this, and that is just uh, untangle it. Uh, now, we know that we've got one king wire running from here to here. That's going to be mandatory. 
well, in fact, a lot of the wires here are going to be mandatory. So that's going to be a route that's going to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's a wire, it's going to be mandatory. Yeah, obviously, Tommy. Also, we've got lots of excess for various things that have lived in various places that don't necessarily need the length of water. Now, similarly, <laughs> you'll see we've got one red here, which is the tight point, and it's shorter than just about every other wire. So, here's the fun part. So long, I look. Cho chopping, lengthening, or shortening, or whatever. Yeah. So is that what we're going to be doing? Just cutting, cutting yeah. all these, trimming them down, so they're all nice and tidy and yep. awesome? That's Sounds it. like a pain in the ass. Now, we're going to go over the most obvious ones first. Things here that used to spark to about seven or eight different circuits, we're going to break off and wire by wire, join them to the length they need to be as one wire. So, so this is going to be us for the next three years. Oh, guys, it's going to be boom! And um, yeah, come back and this is done. See ya. Right, okay, well it's been a week, I've done a, been a few, while. Been a while. I've done a few things and if I'm being honest. What kind of asshole that's, that's a, about no, that's a, that's a, that's someone a, talk about it? How's your teeth? <laughs> what the <laughs> f f man? I Are you like, next to my head? I feel like I'm part of the crew now. I hate this. I, I hate why I'm part of this. <laughs> this is the one thing that's sort of Close-ish to my bailey work, like I work in IT, you'd think I'd be good at this. But most of the cables I play with. What? Bailey work? Hi. Did you just suddenly gain 20 years on me? <laughs> <laughs> You're not here. Wow. I think this is f***ing a Batman villain's cave. Can you straighten that out? <laughs> what? Right, aye. Aye, that thing. <laughs>